Back to Basics is coming to an end. Welcome to Progressive Revenue Management. Have we missed something? For sure. Next Wednesday, it's your chance to get your questions answered. Join us for a special Q&A session. Revenue Management as a career choice. We have new hacks. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Revenue Hacks episode 16. Today we have a very special session. We have guest host Thomas Finn, um, director of Edwards and Finn. Uh, Thomas, welcome to the session. And we also have a surprise for you. Our audience will become today um, host as well. You can log in uh, to the session and ask, um, ask us questions live in the studio. Um, so first of all, as we and to log in to the, um, to the studio, you can do so by following the link bit.ly forward slash rh-16. Uh, so follow that link and you will be able to join us in the studio and ask questions live. Alternatively, as usual, you can also ask questions on LinkedIn as well as normal. Um, so before we start uh, kick off the session today, we'll be talking about revenue management as a career choice, as a career progression. Um, we let's take around the table for those who potentially may not know us yet. Um, Berenger, may we start with you, please? Will you be so kind to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi. So I'm B for short. Um, I'm the founder and managing director of uh, um, MyOC. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> MyOC is, uh, is a consulting company helping uh, hotels. Uh, um, apart hotels, uh, et cetera, to optimize um, revenue and processes um, through optimization. Thank you. Suzanne? I'm Suzanne Williams. I'm the Revenue and Systems Director at Journey. We are a global marketing and tech agency based here in Cheltenham. Great. Thank you very much. And my name is Olga Sama. I'm a revenue specialist, mentor, and also St. Julian Scholar and committee member. And now the word is to Thomas Finn, who joined us today. Thank you very much. Would you be so kind to introduce yourself and tell us more about what you do? Would be glad to do so. Um, <laughs> first off, thank you so much for, for having me on today. Um, my name is uh, Thomas Finn. I'm the director at Edwards and Finn, which is a specialist revenue management recruitment firm. Um, I'm also the host of ENF TV, which is a weekly show specifically for revenue management uh, to make it more accessible for people to, to easily digest uh, sort of information about it in current topics and so on. Um, and I also uh, guest lecture at um, three top universities on revenue management as a career path. Ah, that's perfect. That's why we wanted to have you on this session. Thank you very much. Um, so to kick off the conversation, um, let's maybe take um, through career management or revenue management progression. Um, how does it look like, Thomas, from kind of recruitment point of view, how does that progression looks like? Sure. I mean, in terms of the, the role itself, you know, it's got a lot of different avenues and it all depends on which, well, whereabouts I suppose you come into. But if we're going to break it down from the very sort of basic uh, junior role, we're looking at revenue analysts, we're looking at um, sort of junior analyst, assistant revenue manager, something along those sort of lines. Moving through to revenue manager or cluster revenue manager, whether you're working in a single property or multi-property or dual property, however you want to put it. Uh, moving through to uh, either senior revenue manager or senior multi-hotel revenue manager, group revenue manager, director of revenue, group director of revenue, head of <laughs> revenue, commercial director. Um, the, the job titles these days can, can get pretty crazy. Um, but those are the sort of main levels, if you like. Those are the sort of standard ones that we sort of see in the industry anyway that are being advertised. Um, but as I said, it all depends on, on where you're coming into and also the environment, because if you're going into these multi-branded or, or indeed single branded, but uh, corporate brands, the job titles could be completely different to something in a, in a single property uh, or smaller organization. So talking of um, kind of skill set and knowledge, as you mentioned, because there is such a big, vast, really, difference between the roles and the skill sets required, 
a question to all the hosts and um, the panel today. Um, what do you think right now kind of key skill set required to be successful revenue management? Um, and, you know, we know that revenue management has changed in the last five years and it's right now much more bigger commercial role. So it's, you know, it's no longer just knowing the numbers um, or reading the spreadsheets and Excel sheets is right now kind of the, the only skill set required. It's much more. What do you think kind of the key skills that you see right now thought after? Um, I can take that. Um, so, yeah, I think one of the well, there's not only one, but some of the key elements for me, at least when I was uh, when when I'm recruiting is to make sure that the person is uh, is curious, make sure that the person knows how to communicate. Um, like you cannot be a revenue manager and say like, oh, I know the job. I've been doing it for 10 years. The, the, the market is changing so much that you need to be on top of the game the whole time and ahead like that's the way you'll be ahead of the game actually and ahead of your competitors so i think those are really key elements yes you need to know numbers have a logic etc that's kind of like the mandatory but if you want to be on the top game uh then you definitely need to have those uh, those skills on top awesome Suzanne? Yeah, I agree with B. Yeah, I agree with B. I think that there's a given that you've got a skill set in numbers, logic, rationale, mm. your analytical, your comms are good. Um, however, I think that really you need to be able to influence. And that's actually one of the hardest things to do when as a revenue manager, influence and you need to be tenacious. So you've got to keep on top of your game and look at every avenue regularly about how you can improve your revenue streams. Absolutely, especially yeah, as we yeah. go into more revenue man total revenue management. And right now yeah. with COVID-19, there is so much, you know, about how do you bring more revenue? It's not only about managing revenue, it's really generating revenue right now. Thomas, what's your from kind of in your experience and from recruitment point of view? Yeah, again, I completely agree with um with Suzanne and, and B. I think yes, it comes down to communication skills. Yes, it comes down to being tenacious. Um, I think now more than ever, revenue managers, especially you know coming out of this uh pandemic we're going to have to see people wearing more hats it's not going to be enough just somebody looking at the numbers it's not going to be enough for somebody to be able to just have good communication skills they're going to have to use them effectively and they're going to have to really i think and just an added buzzword if you like but be creative you know tenacious tenacity yes communication yes but be creative in what you're doing find new avenues because if we're looking at, for a very sort of quick example, if we're looking at M&E, just getting more creative with your meeting spaces, understanding your property and what mm. you can do with that will put you in much better stead than somebody that is looking at it that, as they were 12 months ago because we're in a completely different market now. So yeah. ten tenacity, yes. Communication skills, yes. Wearing different hats. But creativity, I think, is going to be a huge one. Fantastic. It's kind of, I, I like the idea that revenue managers becoming right now kind of this, like that. you know, wizards yeah. and are to this. We, yeah. we finally have been giving a freedom to do something a little bit more exciting than just sitting yeah. in our offices as everyone kind of expects that image in their head. That's what revenue managers do. And um, not true. Um, so we, I believe we have already one, someone who is ready to join us um, for the live question. Um, if Rita could um, invite that person, here we come. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Nelly Gideon. I'm the founder of Voyage, which is a platform that encourages uh, both travelers and hotel operators to be more sustainable. I'm fairly new. My background. I'm an electrical engineer, so I'm fairly new to to the to the hospitality industry. I've always been curious as to who decides on the timing and what type of promotions to run. Is it the, the property manager, <laughs> the revenue manager, or a combination of different people, including people in sales? Shall I take that? Suzanne Jones, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> uh, but it should be the revenue manager. Um, no question. So when you're looking at your overarching plan, you're looking to see what's performing campaign-wise and what's not. When there's a gap, when things aren't pacing correctly or you're seeing that certain segments aren't performing as they should, then that's when revenue um, highlight and flag up 12 weeks, 16 weeks. And as you get closer to the date, you're watching that segment change. That's when you proactively say something's wrong. Let's fix it. 
let's put something together. Here's the audience, because we understand the pace and the booking window. Here's the price point. This is how we're going to set it dynamically. Here's the systems we're going to push it out on. And then you track and measure the performance of those campaigns coming through the door. So you can say to marketing, look at your brilliant creativity. It's actually producing top line sales and we're tracking it and it's coming all the way through into your revenue plan. So it should be that simple and it should be revenue every time. Yeah, it's a, well, thank you. it's a combination, really, but uh, it, it definitely needs to be uh, to be to be decided by the RM originally. Mm -hmm. yeah, great. Um, I believe we also have Andy. Um, thank you very much for Nelly for joining us from New York as well, which is really nice. Um, do we have Andy joining us as well? Oh, perfect. Andy Evers. Hello, Andy. Hi, how are we doing? Hi. Hello. Fabulous. Thank you. How are you? Good. Yeah, doing well. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. Um, I didn't have a question as such, um, but I, I guess the um, uh, I, can, I can come up with one. Um, I, I guess the thing that's on everybody's on everyone's minds right now, but you can't you can't have any meetings these days at all without at least mentioning COVID at some point in some context. Uh, and so you've been been speaking about um, the recruitment, um, particularly of, of revenue managers and how that role is diversifying and how it's likely to continue to diversify. Um, which is, you know, that, that, that changes quite a lot. Uh, and so revenue has always been seen, in my perhaps naive opinion, as being a sort of cross-purpose function that, that's capable of lots of things. So I guess my, my question is, is to you there, Thomas. What sort of new roles do you think we're going to see coming out of this? And, and how is this going to affect revenue in the really long term as a department, as a role, et cetera? Yeah. What do you think? Well, it, it, interesting question. Um, in fact, I've already seen it. Um, one of the latest roles that I had come in was something called a commercial analytics manager. Right. Um, these these job classes that I said at the start become more yeah. and more creative, uh, as, uh, as I said. Um, but I do think that we are going to see a lot more of a wider commercial role, simply because, as we all know, with the amount of restructures, redundancies, and so on that are going on, there's going to be less heads in there, and therefore they're going to have to be more diverse in the way that they approach their revenue management. Um, it, it, whether again, whether that be in a single property, if not more so in a single property, um, and within a, a, a sort of a larger group, I think the really interesting opportunities at the moment, at least again from what I've seen, uh, are coming from the smaller hospitality groups. So you're either multi-branded groups, um, basically operations that are able to be a little bit more autonomous in what they're doing uh, a lot less structured in the way that um you know this is the job this is the yeah, way it works yeah, yeah. they're able to create and design these new opportunities around the market that they're now seeing um for example the commercial analytics manager role was stepping away from uh, a pure frontline revenue manager and we're looking at a wider commercial view therefore they're having to get more creative with the other departments but more involved not just saying there's your side, this is my side. And I know yeah. that the the, um, the other hosts on here have, have had these conversations before about uh, stopping the silos, but this is where it's gonna have to be a necessity. And we're already seeing that with the jobs that are coming through. So we are gonna see cluster revenue manager jobs, that'll, that'll always be there, or revenue manager jobs, but we're also gonna start seeing these more rounded opportunities that will have to look, well, that will have to, entail somebody that's going to be or show that they can be more creative they can be more dynamic they're not just going to be the run-of-the-mill revenue manager that we've seen for the last what five six seven ten years um it's going to have to move again but that's what revenue management yeah. has done we've seen progression mm -hmm. year on year with yeah, regards to yeah. the role so i don't think it's going to be hard it's just going to be interesting it's going to be exciting yeah, yeah and if i can uh, just ask that to, to everybody else on the panel as well how that might have uh, how you might have seen this is as, as you were just saying there, Thomas. It's probably an accrual thing. It's probably going on anyway. That it's been sort of becoming less well defined. So have, have the rest of you seen evidence of that on the real front line of of revenue anyway? Just in the main, before all this happened. Yeah, I think there's more recognition yes. and uh, maybe more um, like more trust and people like really see the revenue as oh you're not digging behind your computer you actually can bring me some more um yeah. uh some so, some more data or some food for thought uh that that uh, maybe sales and marketing can action afterwards so 
yeah, it's not like everybody keeps their own stuff. It's like, how do we share and make, um, like get the best out of everybody to, to actually build something better in, within a, a group or an independent hotel, it doesn't matter. Interesting. But, yeah, I, think I think it's coming. But I, I, also, I also think that general managers appreciate revenue manager who can actually bring some contents and, and business with, with the, that appointment. You know, it's always valuable. You can you can bring some value, you know, not just generate additional revenue, but you have some contacts and sales already connections and marketing ideas as well. But I think Suzanne may be able to answer that question as well, uh, because there were some changes in Joanie recently. Um, I think the one of the things that I would just see a really good example of this is we have one client that has five properties and we manage their revenue and digital marketing. Now, what has come to me last week was what's happened working with journey for six months is we've turned in t from being purely operational and slightly kamikaze in our approach to our business our commercial business yeah. into being our kind of well-oiled commercial machine where revenue is leading the information and that's been a massive turnaround for them so mm -hmm. i guess the revenue are showing the leadership there and it's made a massive difference to their business so that's good to see yeah, so you're sort of transgressing into marketing there. That's that's really helpful. Well, Thank you all very much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, well, we have someone else joining. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Yes, yes. we can indeed. Perfect. So my name is Oriane, and I'm a Glion graduate. I freshly graduated. Hello, Mr. I recognize you. <laughs> <laughs> and so I actually have many questions about the industry right now with everything going on. Uh, but I will start with basic questions. Um, so I'm currently in Paris, but I'm looking for opportunities in London, Amsterdam, Switzerland. Very, very much open, actually. And um, um, at Guillaume, we learned a lot about uh, revenue and uh, communications, and you were talking about the skills communication, which is very important for positions in revenue. Um, what would be your uh, the other skills we should demonstrate directly during first interview in order to secure a second interview for jobs? Um, also, as you may know, we are a lot of uh, freshly graduated students on the market, on the job market, as many other people as well. And so we would like to, uh, I would like to know how we could differentiate, differentiate ourselves from others as we are many to apply to the same job positions. And my, I will start with those ones and come back to the other questions after. <laughs> I would well, say in terms of the... Yeah, Thomas, no, go ahead. No, please no. go for it. No, no, no. no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but you in the recruitment for you should go for it, absolutely. Orian, hello again. Hey, yeah, hope you're well. Um, okay, so just um, coming on to the first question then, so obviously skill set. You, you, you so rightly mentioned what we discussed about communication skills. Um, now, if you uh, sort of take that as a, as a given, um, but then we need to look at the data analysis skills. We need to look at the team, um, sort of, I suppose, wider team communication. We need to see that you're able to work in a team. Um, also, I think in terms of your creativity within your past roles, I know if we're talking purely graduate side of things, your experience will be fairly limited. But that being said, you need to identify where you have been creative in what you've been doing, but also where you've been able to influence others. Um, communication, as we said before, is a huge thing, but communication doesn't stop with just being able to, to, to speak the language or be able to, to talk uh, at, a, at a good level. Um, we need to have those influence skills almost, and Susan, you might agree with me here, but sales skills. We need mm -hmm. to have that influence um, capability to be able to make a difference to what we believe is going to be the right way to go. Whether that be in revenue management, whether that be in sales, whether that be in marketing, it goes across the board. So yes, data analysis and, and tech and sort of this sort of thing is going to always be a thing for a revenue manager to look at. But I think moving forward, we're going to look at influence skills. We're going to look at communication skills because as we've all said before, revenue management can be taught. It is a course that can be, can be taken. Um, but if you don't understand your product, if you don't understand your industry and you don't understand your market, where are you going to go with that? So I think Definitely, um, we need to look at the uh, communication, but also influence skills and your wide uh, uh, capability of working in a team. 
If Can I, I just add to add, that? Sorry, yeah, Olga, yeah. Really quick, just really quickly. I think that what we have to absolutely remember when we sit in front of a GM or an HR director, that this is the hospitality industry. It's about people, it's about relationships, and the core function of that hotel is to provide a guest experience. So if you can demonstrate your understanding of that and show willing to learn and understand and get involved, you would stand out from other candidates. And I think that always remember that hospitality is about people and you'll be you'll stand in good stead. If I may also uh, add to that, in terms of the first interviews, I think showing the flexibility uh, mm. because yes, you may have limited experience, but if you if you show the willingness to, to do pretty much whatever is required on the job, whether it's going to be supporting sales, marketing, revenue, whatever it might be, you know, getting just your foot you know foot at the door that's already good enough to start and then progress from there you can you know you will always have support of the industry and leaders to help to progress further I think that first move is very important first few steps in the career um, so flexibility is important one and also I think maybe especially right now there are so many great opportunities even you you know joining for the session today it's already you're showing additional something you, you know you're willing to do something extra and do different you know, writing blogs, um, articles, industry related. I think it shows creativity that you're open minded and you're kind of, you know, curious as well. And that's what I said, recruit myself. I, I, that's what I would want to see from the new talent yeah. going into the industry. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Do you my have more questions? Point, ladies, oh. to, to, uh, yeah, sorry. My little point on that for all the graduates that are listening. I think it's really important that you really stay humble when you graduate, especially from a, a hotel yeah. school. Uh, let's be realistic. We're out from school. We don't know anything, really. Um, so it, it's quite important to, and, and every business is really different. Um, but still, you got so much to bring into a new company, even if you're young and if you, and if you don't have any experience, you're actually bringing this breed of freshness that sometimes companies have lost because they've been in there for so long. So it's quite important that you show that during your interview and show your ambition also. Where do you want to go? Like, you clearly don't want to stay in the role for five, 10 years. You clearly have another ambition. At least I hope you do. And so what do you want to do? But And what can the company bring you? I think that's something, as a recruiter, I love to hear that. I want to know that I'm a step for you in your career. That's quite important. Mm -hmm. Can I um, quickly add as well, and I don't mean to dwell on this too much, but um, to differentiate yourself, again, whether you are a, a graduate, new graduate going into your new role or you're a seasoned professional, either way, the, the um, activity shouldn't be different. Communicate with people, connect with people, talk to people. The, the job market has become something that's been all online based and it takes away from the human element. We need to start talking to people again. If somebody is in a role that you want to achieve, connect with them, talk to them, understand how they got there, what they did, what trials and tribulations they went through, because we've all got stories. Um, and granted, you'll probably send 10 messages on LinkedIn and you might get one back, but that one person might become a mentor. They might become somebody that gives you the best advice you've heard in a long time. It could be anything. So all I'd say to everybody who's listening on the call, if you're looking to progress within your career above the next person, communicate with people, connect with people, understand where you want to go. That's what I'd say. Yeah. If, um, as we were already talking about kind of um, progression, learning, etc., what is your view on accreditation? So I think that accreditation doesn't necessarily have to be there. You can, you can get maybe fill your gaps with one or two day courses. It doesn't have to be. I think one of the most common questions I get is, is let's say Cornell University uh, revenue accreditation, which is worth three and a half thousand dollars. Is it is it a good investment? What's panel's view on this very quickly? Hmm. Well, from, from, from my standpoint, again, when receiving CVs, um, Cornell is always one that does come up, I'm not going to lie, um, and it is something that does take a lot of work, and it is an achievement in itself. Do I believe that it's the be-all and end-all for your application above somebody else's? No. I, I do believe that there is merit in it, and I do believe there is merit in doing these other accreditations, uh, such as um, Revenue by Design, such as HOSPA, they, they deliver these fantastically structured detailed courses that will allow you to get insight and also i suppose some sort of recognition for your contribution 
But whether that's been able to ever get somebody a job over somebody else, I've never seen it. And that's just in my experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Suzanne, anything you would like to join in the on point, point to add? Um, I kind I agree with Tom. I think that accreditation is important in some ways, but would I no, I'm on the fence. Never, that's never happened before. <laughs> um, um, I can see why it's like valid. I can see why it's valid, but for me, no. I think that going with revenue by design, a proper training structured course is going to be valuable um, and less costly. Absolutely. And, and also, there are, we should also mention coaching and mentoring. You know, if you have one of the leaders coaching and mentoring, that yeah. is, you know, that person can add quite a lot really to your knowledge and experience. Um, Gabby, thank you very much for joining us. Um, Hi, everyone. Hi, Gabby. Hello. Hi, Gabby. <laughs> What's I'm your a question? revenue manager in Dublin. Uh, and my question is actually to Tom. He was uh, talking about the revenue manager role and how it's changing and becoming more of a commercial analytical role. Yes. And we know that actually revenue management is quite new in some hotels. So only recently, some hotels are actually starting to work with revenues. Uh, don't Still you think mind boggling, that isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And we do see a, a, some friction there between uh, sales and marketing directors or the person that was in charge of uh, doing uh, pricing decisions. So don't you think that uh, that new commercial analytical role, we could be stepping on, on toes there? No, I, I, I don't believe so. I, I think that um, with any anybody in a sales director role or, or marketing director role, they will know how to be you know, dynamic and adaptable and so on. And they, they would have been working, if they are good at what they do and they're worth their salt, mm -hmm. they would have been doing this or preparing for this anyway. Um, yeah. I think that a wider commercial role, if we're talking about a commercial director role that sits above all three functions, then it's never going to be an issue at all. But I think the yeah. change in a revenue management role again, shouldn't make any difference. If anything, they will be happy in the fact that they're going to be more diverse in, in their skill set. They're going to be more open to getting more involved. I think we've got sales managers that maybe, well, almost definitely have butted heads with revenue over the years because it has always been revenues over here, yeah. sales over here, and we communicate as and when we absolutely have to. But because things are progressing, I think it's going to be a welcome change. And, and to be fair, I've been saying this for a few months with a number of people is, it has to change. If the if we are going to continue to develop this industry, it's going to have yeah. to change, and it needs to be welcome. It needs to be supported. That's and my definitely view. COVID crisis is accelerating that change, isn't it? Completely, it's a necessity. It's about educating each yeah. other, really. And yeah. and in order to educate someone, you need to understand them. So you need yeah. to have those skills. I think that's as Thomas Absolutely. said. It will it will almost bridge that gap between two departments working against each other. It will bridge this. You know, it should really be a role leading the whole commercial aspect yeah. of the business. Susanna, anything you would like to add? Yeah, I agree with all of you. <laughs> <laughs> we should start right? with Susan Perfect. Next. We're all on the same page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank, yeah, you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for joining. Thank you, Gabby. Um, we also had uh, one of the questions uh, about very quickly about OTAs, whether we see change in OTA uh, while we're waiting for Divina to join us. Uh, hi, Olga. I'm here. I'm just sorry, my camera isn't working today. Okay, no worries. Hello. Hi. Uh, thanks so much for inviting me and organizing this. Uh, firstly, it's it's really nice, and uh, I can see a varied spectrum of people from uh, a lot of industries uh, in related to technology and travel. Uh, my question is actually a little bit more specific to the Netherlands. Uh, I, I hope somebody can help me with some insights uh, on the recruitment process and the job opportunities here for a director of revenue. So I've moved here from India a little less than a year ago. Talk about timing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it's getting a little difficult to even get my foot in the door. So if, if any of you all could help me with some insights, some tips, uh, it would be really helpful. Okay. Um, Thomas? Yeah, one thing I would say in terms of um, market wise, um, if we're talking about the Netherlands specifically, the one thing we can look at is the recovery um, of that region has been a lot faster, let's say, than the UK. Um, <laughs> 
that obviously won't change at the moment in terms of opportunities. That won't suddenly increase the amount of opportunities that are on the market simply because hotels have been, well, the hospitality market uh, and travel and tourism market has been hit so massively. So we are still, well, I'd say one or two months ago, we didn't even see the amount of redundancies and restructures that are going on now. Mm -hmm. So we are now dealing with the aftermath of the uh, consultation periods and so on. So with regards to you not being able to get your foot in the door, unfortunately, the amount of conversations that I've had recently have been all very similar. Your one challenge is not going to be your skill set. In fact, it's, that's almost going to be your last problem. Your first problem is the amount of candidates that are on the market. Every single client that I've had recruiting over the last three months has actually said this has been the most difficult time to recruit because the choice has been there. It's not yeah. been a case of I've only got two people and I've got to choose between them. It's I've got a choice of 20 people. I've got to reduce that to 10. And then I've got to reduce that to five. And then I've got to reduce that to one out of three. Right. Um, it's an incredibly difficult process. So I unfortunately, it's not going to be your skill set that's going to be the issue. It's going to be the amount of candidates that are on the market for the amount of jobs that are coming up. Um, what I would say to differentiate yourself, as we've already said, yeah. I would try and look at ways of being able to keep your mind going, keep developing your skills, look at various either online or free courses that you can do, and also start talking to people. Um, if there are businesses that you would love to work for, right. choose five of them and contact them. Don't wait for them to post a job. Contact them now. This is what I'm yep. telling my candidates. And it's almost backwards for a recruitment consultant to say, contact the client. But yeah. it's true. If you really want to achieve um, an opportunity in the market like this, you need to be the most proactive one. It shouldn't be down to you waiting for a job advert and then 20 other people applying for the same job. Choose your clients carefully um, and go for them. Talk to them now because they will be recruiting at some point. It just went. Exactly. Could I also add to this that networking is incredibly important and knowing Dutch quite well, there are plenty of hospitality organizations that are really active. Mm -hmm. So um, join those organizations, find them on LinkedIn, find leaders in the revenue field through LinkedIn, get in touch with them individually, personally, contact them and, and, and you know, start building those relationships because as Tom said, it will be about who you know, it's about yeah. the connections really, the networking. So make the most of the time right now um, get in touch with people, you know, be on their mind, uh, having those for join forums, join different uh, groups. I know uh, Dutch are really good at networking. So there are, I can't remember right now, organization for, for hospitality, but there are plenty in fact. So it should be, I would imagine it should be, um, you know, it, 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 the market is recovering there faster. That's a positive and, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Employment rules are a bit tricky also there. So you may have an opportunity after a few months. Um, because of the way they employ people. So, hi everyone. Oh, hello. Hi. How are hello. you? Good. Thank you. How are you? Good. Very good. Thank you to invite me uh, during this panel. I, I have a, a a question, especially for the Italian uh, reality, because we we have a particular moment here. Uh, actually, for the revenue management, it's very important, of course, uh, to communicate with all the staff, especially with the front desk, uh, the technology. But uh, what do you think? Uh, because in Italy, we talk about a uh, uh, startup. All hotel now is a startup. But for the individual hotel, what do you think that the revenue management uh, should work? Uh, what we should do for a good price uh, policy because the low price of course uh, doesn't bring uh, um, guests so what do you think in this moment uh, what we have to do goodness there's so much to do <laughs> um i mean there is the whole again Suzanne will be the best the best person to answer i think this question you need to have a strategy for every single market segment um and, and go through that really business plan um, because you can do lots of different, you, you need to tackle every single corporate, leisure, um, everything. You need to do lots of collaborations, partnerships, have your strategy for online travel agencies, have your strategy for leisure guests, for corporate pricing. Yes, it's not always about the lowest price. It's a value for money as well. See what will be 
what is your hotel who could uh, it uh, appeal to first of all and start with that group target them first and then build on top of that i know Suzanne will be able to add much more to this no i think you're right olga and it comes down to there's no point slashing your price because if no. the demand is not there it will just be much much harder to climb back up to that um pre-covid position i think the really important thing is to emphasize that your price and value so where there is any green shoots of recovery that you see them very quickly so as soon as they start to emerge you've identified it and you're starting to work on the audience that are coming through but i would also say that work all your channels and that includes the otas and it comes back to a question that somebody asked about the ota dominance when you've got all your channels switched on then you've got opportunity to bring business through every channel and you're not being precious about it driving it direct or what's expensive and what's not let's get the business through the doors and then work to retain and have it come back as repeat but be really really clear about your value proposition what are you adding what is why are you standing out versus your competition don't be slashing rates but communicate clearly with your guests and get your digital profile in order so yeah that's what I would brand say brand website and all channels anywhere your hotel is showing make sure you have On absolutely point. best best absolutely so the customer journey is is is, is kind of really seamless and very nice and uh, thank you very much for joining us Beatrice we have three thank people you. on queue so if we may jump to maybe uh, yeah Anna, Anna. hello Anna hi, hi. hi. You're, on mute, you're, on mute. Mute. you're on mute you're on mute you're on mute <laughs> I'm mute now. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Oh, so noisy. Thank you very much. I followed all of the episodes and it was really useful for me. And I, I, I'm so grateful that I, 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 can, I can watch you. I have a couple of questions. Um, so my name is Anna. I am revenue manager, sales manager, a bit of everything. Uh, was also involved in operations. So I know a lot of um, uh, sites from, from hotels and um, everything. Um, basically, my question is, um, probably first question, um, currently after COVID, um, you will see that loads of companies um, are doing redundancies and a revenue management position uh, quite often comes as one uh, to, to go in redundancy uh, with um, tasks being moved to uh, sales or to reservations, etc. So I would like to know what's your view on it? What do you say, what do you recommend to the hotels if they make that decision? And what would be your recommendation um, for um, all of the revenue managers out there? Uh, if they successfully through the interview, what would be the three main questions the revenue manager should ask during the uh, interview process? um to understand that th their next step will be um good for them so if they good revenue manager they are successful for example would you ask do you have rms system if you don't have i don't want to work for you or something like that so do you have any um recommendations on that should i uh should i take this one please go <laughs> okay um <laughs> Okay, so I suppose with regards to your first question, um, and again, correct me if I'm wrong here, um, with regards to obviously redundancies, um, companies, how, you know, what, what would we say to, to basically people that are either people that are being very redundant or the companies that are making the redundancies? Um, this is a conversation that I had very recently with, with somebody, and it's about the businesses being very um, not specific about who they're getting rid of, but they need to understand the actual skill set of the individual. Because what we could have is a situation where we have a we have a spreadsheet and we've got to get rid of, I don't know, let's say five revenue managers. We don't know who they are, but we've got to get rid of them. Okay. Um, and then we've got to get rid of two salespeople, two marketing people. That, that you know, it is what it is. The problem is, is you might incorporate somebody that's got various specialisms like yourself. Somebody that is able to um, work across all three, revenue management, marketing, and sales. But then you might get rid of the person, uh, sorry, but you might keep the person that actually is just dealing with revenue management and they don't have the experience or the know-how to be dealing with those other areas. What companies need to be doing is being able to understand who exactly they're getting rid of for what exact reason. Because what they could be in danger of is getting rid of people that in fact they're going to need. Um, I've already had this conversation with a number of people and strategies are being put into place because 
they were at risk of getting rid of these individuals that in fact could have been incredibly valuable to the business. Um, to your second question, your, your three questions to a manager or an interviewer who's currently taking you through the process of either staying within your job because obviously whatever. Um, first tip is your first question, and forgive me here that I'm, I'm sort of nitpicking, but it's a recruitment in me. Um, you asked the closed question. Do you have something? It just allows for a yes or no answer, very short. It doesn't really give you any information. If you simply said, what systems do you have in place that are going to be able to support me? They will then take you through that. Um, I would always make sure that every single question you ask an interviewer is open. I know it's a very small thing, but it's incredibly effective from your side because you are then able to extract information from them rather than just getting a yes or no or an incredibly brief answer. The next thing I'd say in terms of question is what is the plan that is in place for this role? Too many of my candidates are going into situations where they're not asking these questions and therefore there's still uncertainty when they get it. What happens if this role then gets made redundant because we have a second wave? What happens if this happens? What happens if this happens? You need to be in that situation where you need to have the gravitas to say, look, I, I am in this situation a lot like a lot of other people, but I do not want to be in this situation again in three or four months time. I need to understand what your plan is. Um, the third question, I suppose, it, it could be anything to be quite honest with you. It's all about what your needs are. Um, a big one for a lot of people, and this, this is a, a big one at the moment, is home working. What is the flexible working status now? Because I've had clients granted, mainly on the larger side, that have always said, you have to be office-based. We can't handle it if you're at home. And we've seen, what, over the last three months that home working is very much capable. If you've got a laptop, you've got a mobile phone, and you're able to dial in, what's stopping you? Um, so if you're conscious about that, ask it. What do you have in place? How does this work? When will it be coming in? Don't ever ask do or is because these are closed questions and you will never be able to get the answer that you really want. I hope that answers your question. Can I just add something into that? Just one thing I'd like <laughs> to just add in, and that's about when a company's thinking about who to make redundant or what positions to make redundant, they can always pose the question about restructuring. So rather than say, you know, if somebody comes to you, you're on the list for consultation for redundancy, then you can suggest that actually what the company does is restructure. Because if there are roles within that business that should be multi-skilled, not the person, the role, then that's a really easy way for the business to save money and reduce the number of redundancies. And especially if you do have the skills that cover operations, sales and revenue, then you're far more likely to be placed into a new position rather than made redundant. So I would bear that in mind that actually hotels and hoteliers and HR have to think a little bit more innovatively about how their business is structured and consider multi-skilling people, which kind of brought us to a question that we were talking about earlier on what's the role and evolution of that revenue manager. If we are moving into a period where there's going to be distress, then let's make sure that you, you have the skills to move forward and cross different departments to protect your job. And that's as a worst case scenario. So that's what I'd suggest. Anna, thank you very much for joining. Great questions. Um, I think we have a few more people online. Ina joining us. Fantastic. Hi, Ina. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. So first of all, I wanted to say thank you to everyone for the fantastic series that is Revenue Hacks. I really enjoyed watching it from the very beginning. Um, and I guess my question today is about total revenue management. Uh, to Thomas, for you, first of all, as a recruiter and to the rest of you as potential employers, is it something that employers and recruiters nowadays are looking for in candidates or is it still something that takes the back seat for rooms revenue management? Uh, should I? Uh, I was going to say I keep going first. Does somebody else want to go first? <laughs> I can or? go first if you want. Yeah, I go can for go first. It. <laughs> yeah. No, I think uh, I think it's good to mention it anyway. So if you if you mention it during the interviews, it's perfect. Um, let's be honest; it's not the top uh, requirement from a uh, recruit uh, recruiter. You you need to know how to manage the rooms first. Now, if you're applying to a hotel that is doing a that is, that is a conference center, for example, and if in a post pre-COVID world, uh, it was still like a big thing, 
um, then yeah, that's quite important. But it all depends on what kind of properties you're applying for. So I think. Uh, but anyway, it's important to mention it because it's potentially something they're not doing at the moment because uh, not a lot of people are doing it. So if this is something else that you can bring to the table, it's great. Mm. I think um, I agree with Lee. It's it's one of these things where it all depends on the the product that you're going into. Um, understanding again the property, but also the the market segment that you're stepping into. Um, total revenue management, as we've said. It, it's not that it's not desirable, it's just rooms will always be the focus for a lot of businesses. Um, if you're going into a resort or you're going into a smaller independent property that have these other uh, revenue streams, then of course it's gonna be a huge thing. Um, but just be prepared for it not to be, again, I know I've used this phrase before, but the be all and end all, uh, because rooms will always take precedence. I don't know, I, I kind of slightly disagree because I've seen more in the last maybe year or two, general managers recruiting for new roles, actually they do want to have C revenue managers who is able to look after the whole revenue management. At the newer hotels coming, um, they, they're split with rooms, nf &B or other revenue, almost 50-50 or 60-40. So moving into the future, I think rev total revenue management is, is a key and that will potentially will set you apart from everyone else. Yeah, That's I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to absolutely 100% disagree with Tom and agree with Olga. I think when you're in front of that, that employer, if you mention total revenue management because you know how to manage rooms, then you've got the lead. And it's about that want, that drive, that push to learn and understand more and the willingness and to see I can bring extra things to your business. I think that's what employers are looking for. It's that extra spark. And by talking about total revenue management, when it's a given that rooms, you've got the experience that's got you through the door, will set you apart and get you the job every time. And also right, yeah, and also right now, as we're going through coming out of the pandemic, you know, rooms yeah. will not be using that bringing that much revenue, you will, there, there are the revenue streams will be right now more important, how to generate additional revenue. That's, that is right now crucial to get right as well. But strategies are all, that is really important to look into all of those aspects. I would agree with that. I would um, agree with that. Do we have, yeah. Lovely. In the thank you. Would you like, do you have any other questions? Would, thank you. Did we answer your question? No, I don't. Cool. Thank something. you very much for thank joining so us. Much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, do we have anyone else joining us for, I know we are running out of time, but I feel obliged we should really answer everyone who is on a, on a queue, if anyone still is there, maybe not. Um, we had a question from Julie, actually. So yeah. she, yes. Uh, Good one. So they have uh, tips for RMs on how to make sure that their sales colleagues don't feel, um, don't feel needed right now. Yeah, we to see that? Have <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I think interestingly, uh, am I still here? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. we can. Um, I think that sales managers in hotels are managing nice business, the corporates, and they're used to you know, the RFP process and managing their accounts. Yes, that business has fallen off a cliff, but it doesn't mean to say that what's going on at a local level, you know, back to the basics for sales, you know, in terms of the networking, getting out there and talking to what business there is potentially building the relationships. Olga, you talked about that before, about maintaining that. All that sales effort should be put into the local audience and really establishing strong connections so that as that business returns, you've actually increased your share of the market. So I think you can make your sales managers feel loved. Um, you can talk to them about the extra revenue streams and get together and get creative with it. What else can you be doing to drive top line sales and bring them right back into um, that strategic plan for every time? Yeah, absolutely. But also it's the same as revenue managers had to learn new new things like sales and marketing. Digital marketing is, is, is crucially right now to get for the business, right? So I think there is more that can be done by all departments really to make sure the business is successful and going through strengths to strengths. Um, the last question uh, we need to ask is, um, where, what are the next five years will bring uh, to the table for revenue managers? And I think we'll finish the session on that. In my opinion, um, one, I think um, it's, an, it's an incredibly difficult time at the moment, but it's also an incredibly exciting time for revenue management. Um, 
from what I've been seeing anyway, the role is diversifying due to necessity, due to need. Um, but that will entail revenue managers to even up their game, to learn new skills, to get, I suppose, get to where they need to be to adapt to this market. Um, I think as a standard, I almost think, and forgive me for the terminology here, but I think the term revenue manager will almost become redundant. I don't think that in five years' time we will still be using revenue manager. I think we'll be using something along the lines of commercial Why manager. Um, Why don't leaders? Yeah. Commercial <laughs> leaders, <might> directors. <laughs> whatever it might be. Um, and I know that, um, <laughs> that you guys will agree that if, uh, if, if revenue management could, it would rule the world. But I don't think um, that we should go down that road just yet. But I, I do believe that uh, awareness will increase um, if people like us, you know, if we keep trying to push the word about revenue management, the awareness will increase, the recognition will increase, and therefore the role will have a wider presence, I suppose, and a much more of an impactful presence, rather than it just being this, it, it's sort of a, an afterthought, and that's the problem at the moment. It shouldn't be. It mm. should be the absolute forefront. Um, so I think five years' time, revenue management will have developed hugely, but I think it's it's still got a little way to go, but I think we're going to see revenue manager a thing of the past. We're going to see commercial manager. Oh, I, would, I would like to know what's happened. What has actually happened in hospitality over the last 25 years that this has been allowed? You know, before revenue management, rooms division, that was such a key position in the hotels. Yes, it's evolved into being a more in commercial discipline but what has happened why are the leaders in hospitality not championing the core structure and function of their business i want to see more ambassadors i want to see it supported and people yeah. talking about it properly let's use our influence to make sure that the people that are coming into this industry to do revenue are properly supported couldn't agree with and you more. I suppose that's what we're doing creating that four rooms and creating yeah. and changing the image of of this field specifically yeah it's fun it's not oh, yeah. I've, I've wanted to say this on here it's a sexy role there you go <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> yeah i need to tell it yes. more that's the thing like uh still in hotels it's still seen as like oh that's boring um yeah. like many recruitment but i have it's, it's like it was always like people are boring you need to be fun it's not because of your numbers that you cannot just uh yeah, just have ideas, be creative, whatever. Like you can have all those skills um, and it's actually really good. That's where you're going to be better on your job. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, I would like to thank all of you for fantastic, really exciting sessions. It's been really interesting. And everyone who joined us for Q&A, that was fantastic to have audience join us. Oh, yep, she's oh. gone. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, then. And we'll uh, we'll uh, see you uh, next week for our next session and something that is uh, uh, more into progressive revenue management, actually. So uh, please uh, share the word. Can I just say as well, thank you yeah. so much for having me on. It's I've, I've been watching them um, throughout the sort of weeks. And um, it's as I said to, to all of you guys separately, it's it's been a real pleasure. And thank you very much for having me. Thanks. Thank you. It's great yeah. for insight. Thanks.